Okay, so in this video, we're going to finish up topic 7.2, um, and when we get to topic 8, we'll go more in depth about how nuclear fission and nuclear fusion could be used to generate um, energy for human consumption. Um, but for now, we'll stick to the basics. Okay, so in the last video, we talked about nuclear fission, um, where you basically take a really, really heavy, unstable nucleus and cause it to split by hitting it with a neutron, cause it to split into two smaller pieces. Um, nuclear fusion is basically the opposite of that. It's the combination of two smaller nuclei fusing together into one larger nucleus. And this equation that you see right here, this is probably one of the more famous examples. And what we see here is basically we have two isotopes of hydrogen. We have hydrogen 2 and we have hydrogen 3. Um, hydrogen 2, by the way, is called deuterium and hydrogen 3 is called tritium. And those are both isotopes of hydrogen. And this is uh, the type of fission reaction that happens all the time in the sun, where basically you're, you're combining these two isotopes of hydrogen um, and you see the products are helium, uh, one neutron, and what's not shown, of course, is a lot of energy. Okay, that's also another product like it is in most nuclear reactions. Okay, now in order to get fusion to happen, um, it's not as simple as writing down an equation, of course, because if you imagine deuterium and tritium, um, in order for fusion to happen, what you have to have is you have to have enough energy to undercome or uh, overcome the repulsive electric forces between those two um, hydrogens because if you get them close enough together what's going to happen is the the protons in the nuclei are going to repel because positive charge and positive charge repels okay and so to actually get the the nuclei in those two um, atoms to touch um, is not very easy it actually takes a lot of energy to force those two things together um, now the sun does that all stars use um, nuclear fusion and that's where the, their heat and their light comes from um, but in the case of stars what you have is you have a lot of gravity because there's so much mass in the stars you have so much gravitational pressure kind of pushing everything inward um, and that's enough to cause this um, this fusion to occur um, getting fusion to happen on earth is much more difficult because again those those repulsive electrical forces get so strong um, when the distances get small that to actually get these two small nuclei to fuse takes an enormous amount of energy. Okay, so um, I said this before, uh, in a way it's the opposite of nuclear fission because it refers to the joining of two light nuclei into a heavier one um, and in the process an enormous amount of energy is released. Now this curve right here we've seen before, this is of course the binding energy per nucleon curve. And on the left side, you can see the part of the curve where nuclear fusion can occur. Now remember, in any nuclear reaction, you, you typically have energy being released, meaning that the products are going to have a higher binding energy per nucleon than the reactants because the products have to be more stable. And so if you look at where, for example, deuterium is here, um, tritium, is here. Those would be the two reactants that we saw before, and their product, their fission, uh, not fission, their fusion product, helium-4, is all the way up here. And so notice as a result of this uh, nuclear reaction, this fusion, the products are higher up the curve than the reactants, and that means that energy is being released because that means that, that the result of this nuclear reaction is a more stable nucleus. Now likewise, nuclear fission um, occurs when you take a really heavy nucleus such as uranium-235 which is not shown here for, for some reason I don't know why they put 238 um, but 235 would be over kind of here and the products of that fission would be somewhere up along the curve because remember in fission you produce two smaller nuclei and so again the products are going to have a higher binding energy per nucleon uh, value than the reactants okay just like we've talked about before because in all nuclear reactions or most nuclear reactions you end up with something that is more stable than what you started with okay therefore having a higher binding energy per nucleon uh, value okay so you can see from this graph kind of visually how nuclear fusion nuclear fission both tend to have products higher or towards the peak um, of this graph where you have the most stability Okay, so pause it there if you need to look at that some more. 
Um, so where do you find nuclear fusion? Well, um, in nature, of course, all stars produce their energy through nuclear fusion, and we've talked about that before. Um, the other places you might see nuclear fusion on Earth is, number one, we're trying to, um, and by we I mean the human race, is trying to develop nuclear fusion technology to produce energy and to satisfy our, our growing demand for energy all over the world. Um, but if you've ever heard of the hydrogen bomb or the H-bomb, those are nuclear fusion bombs. And just to give you an idea of the enor enormous amount of energy um, that they release, in order to get a, nu a nuclear fusion bomb, an H-bomb, to go off, you have to first set off a fission bomb just to get the temperature hot enough to cause fusion. Because if you don't have high temperature or high pressure, you cannot get fusion because, like I said before, you have to have enough energy um, to force the, the lighter nuclei together and they kind of want to repel each other if they get close enough because of the positive charges in their um, respective nuclei. Okay, so I want you to check out uh, the videos I'm going to link um, re that have to do with nuclear fusion. It's very interesting, and uh, we might talk a little bit more about nuclear fission um, when we talk about topic 8, which is energy production, but because there's no current nuclear fusion plants in operation, um, this is more of a hypothetical thing. I thought I would talk more about it in this video. Okay, so definitely check out these videos. Um, ideally, we would love to have nuclear fusion power plants. Um, nuclear fusion releases a lot of energy, um, more energy for fission for the same amount of mass. Um, the fuel for fusion is hydrogen, um, and that's plentiful on Earth because, you know, water is H2O, and so, you know, most of the Earth is made of water, and so theoretically we, we would have all, all the um, fuel for fusion that we need just by taking, you know, water that's already in the oceans and, um, and getting the hydrogen uh, that way. Um, I should also say that in most cases nuclear fusion, the reactant, or I should say, uh, the, sorry, the products of nuclear fusion are not radioactive waste. We saw helium-4 as a product which is not dangerous and neutrons, which could maybe be dangerous depending on what, what they're close to, um, but they're not radioactive substances on their own. Um, and there's also no risk of a meltdown or runaway chain reaction like you have with nuclear fission. Okay, so why do we not have nuclear fusion? If that is the dream and that, that is the ideal, why don't we have that? Well, in short, um, we have not figured it out yet. Um, <laughs> I promise that, that there's many, many scientists all over the world trying to... Um, uh, develop a nuclear fusion plant. Um, there would be a lot of money in that, definitely a Nobel Prize for sure. Um, it's by no means, as far as I know, physically impossible. It's just we haven't really figured out how to do it well yet. Um, I should say we figured out how to do nuclear fusion, but we've not yet done it in a way that we can get more energy out than we put in. Um, okay, so as you're taking notes and you're adding this to your, your, um, your notes, the information on this slide. Notice you have to have very, very high temperatures to cause fusion to occur. Millions of degrees, hundreds of millions of degrees. Okay, that's a lot of energy. Um, and in fact, that's more, uh, that's hotter than the surface of the sun. Um, and you might ask, how, how could that be that the temperature required is hotter than the sun? Well, Remember, the sun has an advantage where it has so much gravity pushing everything in together um, that the temperature doesn't have to be quite as high. In order for us to cause fusion, we have to have really high temperatures because we don't have the advantage of all that gravitational pressure that the sun has because of its mass. Okay, so um, one of the main issues is, you know, the very high temperatures. Um, the other issue is that at very high temperatures, you get what's called a uh, plasma. And a plasma is basically just an ionized gas. It's, it's a gas that's so hot that the electrons have fallen off of the gas. Um, and the problem is if you have this plasma, um, it's so hot that it tends to melt stuff. And so it, one, one of the tricks is to find a way to get these really high temperatures um, without melting the container that they're in. Um, because if they, if they touch the walls or something, it's all over. Um, not to mention you still have to figure out how to take the energy coming out of the reaction and create electricity from it. And so one of the ways that you might see on the IB exam that we, we do this is with what's called a tokamak. And a tokamak is basically, um, I'll show you a picture uh, in a second, but a, a tokamak is basically like a magnetic bottle. 
And the idea is that by using really, really strong magnets, you can force the plasma to kind of go around um, in the bottle without touching the walls. Um, and that, you know, something like this. Okay, so this is the idea. Um, these rings create really strong magnetic fields, and the idea is that you would have this really hot plasma kind of going around in a circle really, really fast. And as long as you can keep them in the center of the donut and not um, touching the walls of the donut, then everything is okay. Well, at least in theory. Okay, so that is the idea of a tokamak. If you want to pause it here to add this last slide to your notes, or the second to last slide to your notes, then uh, by all means do that. Okay, so that's one of the primary obstacles is not only creating a really high temperature plasma but containing that high uh, temperature plasma needed for fusion okay so that is still ongoing and th this by the way the tokamak is definitely not the only uh, method of containment um, in nuclear fusion but it's one that I've seen on past IB exam questions so that's why I'm mentioning it now um, there's lots of different companies out there doing lots of different research into lots of different ways to um, contain nuclear fusion and some are you know farther along than other methods so hopefully um, sometime in the next couple of decades we can come up with a viable nuclear fusion plant uh, because if so that would definitely be a game changer as far as our, our energy needs go okay, because if we could if we could harness the power of nuclear fusion, then we would basically have all the energy we would ever need. Uh, and when I say us, I, I mean the human race. Okay, so the last slide here is just kind of, kind of a summarization between the, uh, the differences of fission versus fusion. Um, you can read that on your own. Um, but that is basically it as far as the CNET is concerned. Um, if you read through the rest of 7.2, you might be able to get some extra information. Um, and I would definitely encourage you to look at the questions at the back of that textbook, um, or at, at, I should say at the end of chapter uh, 7 in your textbook and on your 7.2 worksheet. Okay, so that is basically it for nuclear fusion. Um, and I said before, when we get to topic 8 and we talk about different methods of energy production, we'll go into a lot more detail as far as how nuclear fission works um, and how we can create nuclear power plants using nuclear fission. Um, we won't talk much more about nuclear fusion because we still have not figured that out yet. So again, hopefully within the next couple of decades, uh, we'll figure out nuclear fusion, at least how to make it a viable uh, energy source uh, in a commercial power plant where it's producing more energy than uh, it takes in. Okay, so that is it for topic 7.2. Please let me know if you have any other questions. And I will see you guys in the next video.